Today I'm going to talk about something that's been bugging me for some time, and that's the difference between headless architecture and decoupled architecture. I don't know what it is, but I've been hearing a lot more about decoupled architecture in reference to headless architecture. I don't know whether it's just the fact that monoliths right now have seen the way in terms of headless and are forcing themselves into that space. And the only way to differentiate between the two of them is to really understand what headless architecture is and what decoupled architecture is. The thing is, when I'm out there talking to business people and they hear someone say, well, it's not really headless architecture, that's decoupled, their eyes glaze over and they just have no idea what you're talking about. And why do they care? And what difference does it make? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to run through the architecture quickly, give you an understanding of what people mean when they talk about headless architecture and when they talk about decoupled architecture. So let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. So first of all, we will start with the traditional monolithic web CMS. For simplicity, I'm going to use shapes to represent different types of content in this diagram. Like with all CMSs built in this time, they were very opinionated. They were built for a specific purpose, like a web marketing channel. They defined a specific technology stack. They defined the delivery model, such as pages and components, and even defined the infrastructure they would sit on. At the core of these systems was a database, usually SQL, that stored what types of content you could use, what type of components you could use, how the pages were structured, and templating, as well as navigation. Being opinionated about the front-end technology and the database meant that they could represent content and UI elements directly out of the database in a nice user-friendly UI. Business users would use the content types and components available to assemble the pages they needed. These pages would be stored in the database and are reassembled in the business logic layer. Templates were used to turn the page objects into actual pages that were fully styled, ready for the head or the presentation layer. As these systems had a very close binding between templates and business UI, and being so opinionated and closely coupled across all the layers often meant that these CMSs would have WYSIWYG editing interfaces. The challenge comes when you want to manage more than one single channel. And some of these channels require more complicated content or content types that just don't exist in traditional CMS. And this is where headless CMS steps in. The really interesting and powerful thing about headless CMS is Unlike traditional CMS, where you're given predefined components, content types, pages, and templates to assemble your customer experience, Headless CMS allows business users to actually model their business concepts from their business domain into the CMS. Business users can use these custom content types to create the exact content that they actually need, allowing them to provide much better customer experiences in each of the channels. So with a Headless CMS, you don't get predefined content types defined inside a database table. You have the ability to create your own content types using schemas. So we've defined a traditional monolithic web CMS and a headless CMS. So what's the architecture of a decoupled CMS? This usually happens when a traditional CMS wants to go headless. They start by replacing the templating layer with an API, which will wrap all of the objects and calls in the business logic layer and the predefined content types and objects in the database layer. So pretty much everything stays the same. You have an API version of a template. In other words, you've decoupled your head from the base CMS. The problem is when you try to use it with other channels, you can still only use the predefined content types in the CMS. And in this case, it's like trying to use a square peg in a round hole. Also, if you need to generate more complicated content types, you have to try and build them from the ones you already have in the CMS. So putting an API on a traditional monolith does decouple the monolith from the head, but it doesn't make it purely headless. To do so, you have to fundamentally change the architecture and the implementation through every single layer. So I hope that run through of the architecture and that explanation goes somewhere towards helping you understand what is the difference between headless and decoupled architectures. So if you found this video useful, can you do me one favor? Can you scroll down a little bit, press that like button? I'd really appreciate it. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.